I want to talk about this story because I, because this is this is important on a lot of different levels. Uh, this will be the last story that I talk about, and then we'll wrap things up uh, and and enjoy the rest of our Monday. Uh, this this story is from Mint Press News, uh, excellent site that I highly recommend for any sort of anti imperialist and especially foreign policy news. They're they're solid on that stuff. Big fan of Mint Press News. Uh, I was able to have Manar on my podcast over the summer. She's she's an absolute delight. I got to like meet her for half a second uh, about a year or two ago in Minneapolis. Uh, that was really fucking cool. Um, but right now. Ecuador is about to have an election on Sunday, February 7th. And uh, what polls are showing is the socialist anti-imperialist candidate, uh, and I'm sorry if I'm going to butcher this gentleman's name, uh, Andre Arauz, 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 I think it's Arauz. If I'm, if I'm butchering it, I'm so sorry. Uh, I, I, if, if you know the actual pronunciation of that, uh, you know, type it up phonetically uh, uh, in, in the, in the comment section. And I will, uh, I will, I will start pronouncing it properly or do my best to pronounce it properly. Uh, this is 35 years old. He's an anti-imperialist socialist, uh, that, that believes in, you know, s similar policies that Rafael Correa did. Rafael Correa was, uh, the previous president before Lenin Moreno. He was the pro Assange president. He was, uh, relatively lefty. He had some issues with the indigenous community. Um, and you know, but he he nationalized the oil. He increased the um, increased r income and revenue for Ecuador. Got people out of poverty. And this guy is, is pretty similar. And and polls are showing that if he wins, uh, he might get double the amount of votes that his previous, uh, or rather the the next leading uh, candidate gets. So he'll be leading number one with double the votes that the the second place candidate has that's incredible that's really awesome so now that you know there there are some um international election observers uh and groups that are going down to ecuador to monitor to make sure that this is a legal election that that there is no uh a tomfoolery happening in these elections yeah so one of these organizations is the organization of american states uh, which is connected with the coup in Bolivia, the failed coup in Bolivia, because the socialists uh, won in Bolivia as well. And now we also have a socialist in Venezuela, uh, the, uh, who, who, who uh, Joe Biden doesn't recognize as, uh, as the legitimate leader of the country, even though most of the world and the UN is like, can we cut it out with this whole Guan Guaido thing? This asshole that we've never heard of is going to be... Um, the uh the the president like you guys can't just be like and the president of venezuela is who we say it is <laughs> like you can't that's not how election or democracy works uh so i feel like do you guys feel like america should have election observers come in with how truly shit our elections are from the Democrats fucking over the primaries to the Republicans using every trick in the book to fuck over voters in, in, in the generals. Like, I feel like America should have international election observers from various different countries come in and they would look at our our elections. And then uh, they, everybody would be like, well, what do you guys think? Do you guys love our elections? And then they just hold a picture uh, of a garbage fire. And they're like, that's what we think of your election. It's a it's a garbage can on fire. That's yeah. You guys got to restart. I don't. Did you guys understand? Do you guys understand how democracy works? Like you guys know that corporations shouldn't be involved in a fucking democracy. Yeah. Like you guys know that or you guys know. OK, well, we're going to. None of your elections are legitimate. Uh, every election is a piece of shit. <laughs> like that's what would happen. <laughs> so. Uh, now. Here's what's going on with Moreno. You would figure when somebody has an election coming up in seven days that they would be in their country campaigning, right? Meeting with your fucking voters and what ha whatnots. No, no, no. Lena Moreno is currently in D.C. That's where he is. He is in D.C. meeting with the Biden administration, a manager of the IMF, uh, and <laughs> and members of the OAS, the, the Organization for uh, American States. He's just going to meet with them. So it kind of sounds like he's plotting a fucking coup. 
Like he's asking America to basically be like, hey, can you use your money and power uh, to make sure that this fucking socialist doesn't win? I know you guys are good at that. I know you guys haven't had any luck in that recently, you know, with the whole trying to overthrow Maduro and trying to get a, a neoliberal in Bolivia so you can have all their lithium. But I know you guys have, but maybe, maybe I'm different. You know, I, maybe I can use that uh, anti Assange charm, you know? <laughs> I know you guys are not doing great in that extradition shit either. You guys are having a tough time with with extraditing a journalist that you've called a fucking uh, war criminal. <laughs> but maybe you can help me out. And why this is a big deal, too, is because the IMF gave uh, Lennon Moreno a $4 billion loan um, after, he, uh, after he illegally ejected Assange from the Ecuadorian embassy, and which is what uh, Rafael Correa did. Rafael Correa was gave, able to give him asylum in the Ecuadorian embassy, and that's not like a fucking, uh, like being being getting asylum and being in in the Ecuadorian embassy is like not a vacation. It's a it's it's pretty. It was pretty stressful for him. So so that's what's going. So you know, Moreno's meeting with all these these people. <coughs> And it sounds, <laughs> excuse me, and it sounds like he's plotting a coup. He's he's going to try to, over, like, illegitimately try to win the election. And go against uh, Arawiz. Or Ar 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 Arawuz, sorry. Uh, and Arawuz is, is an anti-poverty, anti-imperialist. Uh, he wants to connect with these lefty, leaders in Bolivia and Venezuela to try to basically like strengthen his country, to have better relations with these nations, to help these nations with, you know, so if like Ecuador prospers, maybe Bolivia and Venezuela will prosper too. And they'll, 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 you know, do okay by their people. That's his whole thing. He is trying to jump off of Correa's legacy. You know, Correa reduced poverty by, for and poverty and extreme poverty by over 50%. He increased revenues for the country by nationalizing its oil, similar to what Venezuela did. Uh, and then he ejected American troops. So Rafael Correa was really like a danger to American neoliberalism, to the fact that America can't come into Ecuador and just take their oil and, you know, manifest destiny, their fucking oil. Now, look at the president that's currently in place, Lenin Moreno, who was the VP to Correa and said that he was going to uphold all the shit that Correa, uh, Correa was doing and try to make it better for the people. He increased poverty, uh, and because of his neoliberal economic policy, the pandemic was completely mishandled, similar to what happened in Brazil, similar to what happened in America. These hyper-neoliberal economies do, do an absolute shit job during the pandemic, because they're more concerned with economics, they're more concerned with revenue and profit than they are a, a public health concern for their people. The guy, one, one of the things, uh, hold on, let me see if I can find this uh, particular uh, part of uh, the article, because it's, it's, it's rather funny to me. Um, the way uh this guy talks about it. okay let's let's do this so this is the mint press news article uh this is from uh this is from a, a contributor uh to to mint press is the situation in ecuador is very fucked up i don't even have a, the means to explain in english uh all of what's happening the new minister of health is an incredible idiot coronavirus or not the country is in big trouble with a wildly incompetent government so that's, I mean, so that's that's part of Moreno's legacy. Now, uh, the other part of Moreno's legacy is the attempt to kill free press by ejecting Julian Assange and throwing him into this this fucking circus show trial to extradite him to the United States, which he, which they couldn't even succeed on because American prisons are so fucking atrocious. They were like, yeah, this guy's going to kill himself. You guys don't understand like how fucking terrible your prisons. This guy might commit suicide. <laughs> like, <laughs> And then, of course, the judge also uh, said some other shit where she supported a bunch of CIA talking points and stuff. So, you know, the, so of course people want something different. 
Everybody wants to veer away from neoliberalism and, and this hyper capitalist state because it doesn't fucking work. It's just not it just doesn't fucking work. And so they go to these socialist populist candidates. And now America wants to do the same thing that they did here by, you know, controlling the election and fucking over the socialist candidate. Just like they and, and you know, Bernie Sanders in global standards is not as far left as what other people might consider left but in america he's you know far left compared to the fucking who we have in charge now uh and i have my qualms with bernie and all that and and we won't get into that or else this will be a three-hour stream but uh but i want to i want to read this because uh this is something that's important this is the last paragraph of the article Otto's two closest rivals for presidency are Guillermo Lasso, a 65-year-old banker and former Coca-Cola executives who has a, a strong following among the country's upper middle class, and 51-year-old indigenous leader Yaku Perez. Perez came in, to national attention after leading protests against Moreno's austerity measures in 2019. That was when he got the IMF loan. Um, however, he distanced himself from the left. When asked to comment on Aros's plan to give $1,000 to 1 million Ecuadorian mothers who are the head of the households, he, re he replied that he opposed the idea because they would probably spend it all on beer on the same day. That's, that's what Perez, the national, um, the indigenous leader was saying, which is so bizarre, right? It's so fucking bizarre to say that the heads of households are just going to fucking spend their money on beer. It's, it's this anti-poverty... We we heard that from Larry Summers, um, who was who was uh, part of the Treasury Department under by under the Obama Biden administration. Uh, he was con connected to some one of the money departments. Um, I can't remember exactly, but but Larry Summers went on national television and basically said giving two thousand dollars to poor Americans is a bad idea because you're just going to spend it all in one day and not contribute to Wall Street. They're not going to put it into the stock exchange. But what happened when poor people did put it into the stock exchange? You know, they they shit on them and they said that what they did was illegal, even though they were just playing the same fucking game that these rich assholes play anyway. So, you know, so, so this is this is a, a this is what, what I'm point, trying to point out is one more than one more than two parties. Right. We have we have at so far four candidates uh, on the ballot. Um, and on top of that. This this notion that, oh, poor people can't manage their money is a global philosophy. This hatred of 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 the poor working class is a global hatred of the poor working class. Now, both uh, trail ROs in the polls, meaning that he could achieve outright victory in one round of voting, a rare achievement in a multi-party democracy. However, given given the plots brewing, ROs may have more to fear from the U.S. and his own election authorities than from his political rivals. Once again, pointing out that Moreno's going and trying to get help from the IMF, from the OAS, from the Biden administration to basically say, hey, if I lose... You guys have to step up and do what you did for Venezuela and just claim I'm the president anyway. And that, oh, there was faulty play in in uh, the the Ecuadorian fucking elections on Sunday, even though Venezuela and all these other countries, they have this ranked choice style. They look for they look for the absolute majority. They have paper ballots mixed with machine voting. They have exit polling data that they look at. America should not be coming close to any of these fucking elections because American elections are a garbage fire. When I became a citizen in December of 2019, uh, or 20, yeah, yes. Uh, December 2019, I became a citizen and everybody's like super excited for me. And I was like, yeah, I get to take part in the circus show you guys call democracy like that's that's it like i'm not excited i'm not excited for you guys to bully me and to try to fucking vote for either shit candidate like that's not what i'm excited about like that's what happens in america other countries have to worry about the same fucking thing which is americans fucking getting involved in their elections that's how terrible america is and they don't believe in democracy period this is th this is not how you operate democracies by going behind the back and getting other fucking countries to come in and fuck with your elections while they fuck with their own elections. Let's look at some comments. <laughs> uh, 
Dear Franklin, damn right Americans should have election observers. Holly seconded, yes, U.S. U.S. needs observers. Absolutely. With with how terrible our elections are, we absolutely need it, especially after what happened this time around. We absolutely need it. We need a, a unbiased, neutral party to come in and fucking watch what's going on, to fucking see how, how Dominion does. In fact, they they have proprietary uh they, they you can't look at whether your uh vote actually went for who you went for absolutely need <laughs> dinner with franklin it's it's a failed democracy after all yeah it's a failed state we're living that's what we're living in we're living in the in a failed state you know this is sort of the beginnings of that neoliberalism has been falling apart for for the last decade and and they're grasping for straws that's what they do they're backed into a corner and they'll and they're grasping for straws. Jimmy uh, Holly, Jimmy Carter said Venezuelan elections were fair. Absolutely. Yeah. So did a bunch of election observers. International election observers have said that that's one of the most democratic uh, election processes that they have ever seen. And the, it's one of the most efficient election processes they've ever seen. And it's one of the best election processes they've ever seen. The only country that has a problem with it is fucking America because America is not interested in getting the voice of the people heard. They're interested in making sure that corporations have a fucking mouthpiece up at the top and we get crumbs at the bottom and we have to be happy with it. <laughs> Democracy, ain't it grand? It sure is. Uh, it sure is. Thank you so much for checking out this video. If you enjoyed this content, uh, please make sure that you hit the like button hit the share button, and make sure you're subscribed to my channel, whether it's on Rockfin, YouTube, or Facebook. Especially Facebook and YouTube, they often uncensor pe uh, un unsubscribe people and they censor this content. So if you want to keep up to date, make sure you're subscribed. Hit that bell button so you get notifications of when I'm putting up new videos and when I am going live. I usually go live uh, on uh, Fridays and on Mondays. Uh, and if you want more information about a, a bunch of the other stuff that I do, uh, whether it's my Forkful of Noodles podcast, the Taboo Table Talk interview podcast, or the Road Reflections live streams, uh, make sure you go to my website, krishmohanhaha.com. It's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. There you'll find past episodes of uh, of various shows that I uh, that I do, as well as information about when I'll be performing live virtual comedy shows, the Forkful of Noodles live virtual comedy shows. Uh, the dates and tickets will be available directly on my website. But if you're also on financial stable ground, you can help contribute to the show financially by making a one-time donation or becoming a sustaining member, which gets you free tickets and bonus content. And go to krishmohanhaha.com slash donate to, to make any kind of financial contributions. But if you can't, it's not a necessity. Most of my stuff is available for free and for everybody to enjoy. So again, go to krishmohanhaha.com. It's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A. -H 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 -A, and I hope to see you at the next video.